So, um, <laughs> so what we're going to uh, we're going to talk about just kind of an introduction about me and, and who I work for, um, uh, Delta and and Parquet and the key features of Delta. Uh, a little bit about uh, governance. Then there's a there's a demo that is semi live. Um, I'm not a complete madman, but um, I want to uh, show show a few things in Fabric, and then how it, how Delta actually works in Fabric and and the future roadmap. Hopefully, I have time for a bit of a Q and A. So a little bit about me. Um, I graduated from Durham uh, in 2021 with a master's in maths, and since then I've worked in pretty much just Azure data. Um, so ADF, Synapse, Fabric, um, all all that kind of stuff, and I'm lucky to to come into the world in just cloud data. I don't have to have worried about kind of all this this pain of traditional kind of data engineering and and indexing and all that kind of stuff that that all these clever people have sorted out for me. Um, and I'm currently the head of data engineering at Check. So who Check are we? We're a, an NHS provider. Uh, primarily for, for eye care and, and gastroenterology. Um, I've, I'm about two months into the job now, but and I, I didn't really understand what a, an NHS provider was. Um, we're a kind of private uh, healthcare company that have our own hospitals, our own doctors, that we provide services to the public under the NHS and, and we kind of help out with um, kind of getting the waiting list down, all that kind of stuff. So if you went to, if you went to the GP for and you needed cataracts, you could either go to a trust at the general uh, hospital and, and have a two year waiting list for surgery, or you could come to a check hospital within two weeks and, and get it done, kind of thing. So, we're um, we've been around for about 10 12 years and we've got about 25 hospitals um, in and around England. We're rapidly expanding, we're chucking out um, hospitals all the time, but we're primarily a healthcare company and we've never been a health tech company, so all of these processes have been manual with the with kind of even from from the, the op side of it to all, all the data that we produce is just completely manual it does, is a business that runs on excel all of our finance all of our uh, kind of marketing our commercials our contracts everything is done through excel um so as this as we're expanding so so rapidly um it's kind of putting a strain on on a, our our workforce so with all this amount of data, we've got all our patients, our appointments, diagnoses, kind of all the procedures that we do, we've got all these scans that happen, um, but massive amounts that go through our through our systems without any kind of BI tool or, or side or warehouse or anything like that. It's all just what's the state of play at the moment? Let's let's build the NHS for what happened last month. We can't go back and do any trend analysis, any forecasting, any anything like that. Um, every Kind of department have their own siloed third party software to do stock management or kind of finance and stuff like that. So what we're doing is we're we're, we're building a, um, a kind of lake house in fabric to bring all that data together so we can do all that analysis um, through amazing kind of Power BI um, reporting insights, do some really clever stuff with, with AI and machine learning. We've got the perfect data sets for, for all this kind of um, machine learning stuff. We've got kind of eighty thousand eye scans a day um, that come through that are literally labelled by a doctor of what disease that is in this eye scan. So we've got really cool um, use cases. And I hope in a year's time we can come back and kind of show what we've done with it all. Um, but for now, it's just getting all that data and, and into a lake house and building it all in. So what I want to talk about is um, is Delta Lake, which is the um, which is the open format storage layer um, on a data, data lake. So just for a kind of understanding who's, who's in here, who's, who is working in Fabric at the moment? A few of you. Um, and, and in Synapse? Still in Synapse, because Synapse is a bit... Um, park, okay. like from a, a lot of Parquet files and stuff. And then is there anyone in, in Databricks that's familiar with, with Delta already? Okay, cool. So it's not um, completely unfamiliar to, to most of you. Um, so Delta Lake is this open format, open source storage layer that sits on your data lake. And the best um, example, uh, the best description of it that I've ever heard is from, from the CEO of Databricks, um, Ali Godzi, the, uh, the most recent Data and AI Summit. And he kind of described it as having um, removing this vendor lock-in from your data. You don't have to, to worry about it being in um, kind of like 
an Azure SQL database or or anything like that. He, he talks about it being like a, a USB for data, and you you own your own data again. It's complete separation of of compute and storage, and so you will store your data within your Delta Lake. And if you decided to go to um, like another product, if you went to Databricks from from Fabric, if you wanted to move into to Fabric, you would take your Del Delta Lake, which is all your data, and you could just plug the vendor into that. So you kind of remove this vendor lock in that's that's been that's been there. Um, so it's announced. Um, in 2017 and open sourced in 2019 and since then it's been in Databricks um, and then Fabric now adopts, uh, adopts Delta Lake. Um, it's, it's open source and there's, there's such a massive um, focus on it. There's, it's rapidly evolving, there's always new releases every year that kind of keep revolutionising anything. There's not really going to be a competitor to it. Um, this year they announced that um, Databricks have bought Tabula, which the other competitor is um, a thing called Iceberg, which does a similar thing, and they just bought the company that own Iceberg, and they're just going to slowly bring Iceberg closer to, to Delta, so that one day there's just going to be one format. Um, so it's always going to be the, 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 the kind of the future. Um, but essentially, it's the Parquet files, which um, have been around for a few years, but with a transaction log built on top of it. Um, so you've got your, your, your files that are yeah, the parquet, they're so efficient, read and write, and then there's this transaction log on top of it, which have all these special features that make it um, kind of trustworthy and, and kind of have these extra features that you can do so much more with your data rather than just having it as a storage format. So it Im improves the, the reliability for the Spark engine than just the parquet files, which, which were in kind of synapse and stuff. So between... Um, the parquet and delta lake because they're the same thing with this transaction log there's, there's kind of four main uh features that this transaction log enable to have acid transactions um the schema enforcement and schema evolution scalable method handling and uh time traveling and version so we're going to go to each of these and kind of explain what they are but these four things kind of differentiate um parquet from delta so acid transactions are aren't new. They're kind of this technology that's been implemented um, by data warehouses for, for, for however many years, but it's basically to ensure the trust in your data. You know that when you put a transaction across into your storage that you know it's going to complete. It's, gonna, um, it's, it's not going to kind of clash into something. You're gonna, um, it's going to be able to happen. So the ACID is, a, is an acronym for the ACID, which is kind of, it will only complete and, and on success, and if it doesn't, it rolls it back, so you don't have anything halfway there. Consistency, so you know that it it knows what it should end up in, and what state it should end up to. So if you try to do schema enforcement, which we'll show in in the demo, um, or schema evolution, if it knows what it's trying to end up to, if it doesn't get to that, it kind of has a has a fit and tells you it's not allowed. Um, Isolation, so you can run concurrent notebooks, concurrent things at the same time. You know, there's going to be no conflicts. And then um, durability, which is uh, writing right into persistent storage before it confirms it. So with all those, it's just kind of building in your trust in. There's no corruption, which um, was sometimes a problem with Parquet. Um, the next feature is schema enforcement and schema evolution. So these quite they're similar but very different. Um, and it depends on what case you want to, to use it in. Um, schema enforcement is is a, a way of um, kind of ensuring the consistency. So if you if you weren't expecting a data type to change, or you weren't expecting a new column or, or remove a column from your data um, from your data frame, so to get, when you're overwriting it or, or trying to merge into it, it doesn't match that expected structure. It will tell you no, it's not allowed to do it. Um, but what you can do is you can um, yeah, put, put settings, settings in to, 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 to allow it to, to evolve. And if you have these settings um, kind of set on the, in, the, in your notebook or on your, on your environment, then it will automatically adjust to those schema changes and, um, and whether you're adding it or modifying a column, changing a data type, that kind of thing, changing a name. What it really allows stuff to do is kind of like halfway through a pipeline, if you decided you needed a new um, column in that data frame, you don't have to go back from the start and historically load everything again. You can kind of load back on top of that those parquet files, which 
um, I don't know, I've, I've kind of bumped into that problem a few times where I've not got schema right in the first place and then you have to rewrite everything over, over the top again. And then with the transaction log, we've got kind of version control as well, so you can track everything. So all this tra transaction log is kind of a common theme that everything for auditing and, and um, kind of compliance as well, they, they, they're they a big thing in there. The third feature um, is scalability, scalable metadata handling. And this is kind of the slightest bit over my head. It's, it's the clever bit that Databricks kind of do to make Delta work fast and, and work well, and, and you don't have to really worry about it anymore. Um, so you've got kind of, you're storing things in Parquet, which are, are ensuring like quick read and write on, on large data sets. It's columnar stored. There's kind of less of a, of a need for um, kind of indexing things. Um, it's running on, you're running on Spark, so you kind of massively parallel processed. Um, so you can have that real performance at scale and it works with all of that. And then these next three are kind of, these are the behind the scenes, how Delta Lake works. There's, there's clever people working on algorithms and, and making sure that how different schemas and auto partition and all that kind of works best for your data and there's AI involved and everything like that. But kind of behind the scenes, you don't have to worry about um, kind of the schemas and the partitions. So you've got auto partitioning. So I think the best practice is if your data is less than a terabyte, you shouldn't try and put your own partitions in. It'll do it all itself for you unless you expect um, a partition to be at least a gig each. Um, it will, you should trust the, the Delta Lake uh, method, method of partitioning. And also kind of, it does intelligent caching to, to work out what you're um, uh, quite frequently querying on. Um, and so just making things a lot, a lot faster than, than kind of your traditional methods of, of um, storage. And then the kind of, the, the, cool, the cool thing, I know I say cool a lot, it's not, not very cool to a lot of my friends, but I think it's quite cool. Um, it's, it's time travel, which is versioning. Um, so with this transaction log, it you can automatically it, it, it stores what's changed between each version of your data. So if you if you're moving uh, if you're merging new data into it, or if you're overwriting things, or if you're doing all these different kind of data transactions, there is a um, kind of a, a log behind there that um, versions everything, which means that you can run historical queries. As if, it as if it existed now, you could go, all right, show me what the data looked like six months ago. And so you can do all this auditing and debugging without keeping big history tables to go, right, this is what's happened all over the place. You can, um, depending on what, you, what your use cases are, but we show this in the demo. Um, and then you can also, when you say, all right, if you do some kind of something wrong or there is a bit of corruption or the data is wrong, you can revert back to an earlier version. And that's to... You can both do both of that um, with a version um, and say, right, show me two versions ago. But you can also do it as a timestamp and say, I'll give you, I want to, I want to go back to that data a week ago or, or or anything like that. So you don't need to know exactly how many versions have happened. Um, and then again, um, compliance and auditing, which is quite big in in, in my role. Um, we've got a lot of patient data and all that kind of stuff, which um, we need to. Uh, we do we do get audited quite a lot, but it's really easy to kind of know that um, the auditors aren't going to be on our back because we've got Delta Lake um, and stuff like that. So, so then with that as well, the, the boring slide, but it's quite important, um, is governance and how Delta fits into that and how it fits in with Fabric and Purview. Obviously, it's when you're in Fabric, you've got um, Purview fitted in, which Purview is the, um, the, the Azure kind of... Um, a governance tool and it fits in seamlessly with Delta Lake so you can do all of the features of the purview that that you that you usually can and um, so your, your data lineage your cataloging um, classification and sensitivity labeling um, system policy enforcement access controls retention rules all these kind of things that come with purview fit so easily within with Delta um, there are there are improvements we made, and I know perfect uh, purview is not perfect, um, but I think they are going to be kind of they, they have to keep up with Unity Catalog because um, and it will fit because there isn't a Unity Catalog and Fabric kind of seam at the moment. They, they say there, this, it's a bit hard to put your data in, into there, so I'm hoping uh, Fabric is a bit better. 
with the, with Purview. So then, now I want to kind of show a few of those um, those features in the, in a in a notebook demo. So if I go to this screen, so I'm in a I'm in a fabric notebook here. Um, so I've I've, I've pre-run most of it. Um, so I've I've loaded up a a lake house. That I've got I've just got one. Uh, table in there. Um, I've I've gone football related. Uh, just for some things anything else. But I wanted to kind of not do anything kind of spark. It's just we're going through the Delta table um, API. So the big a big setting that you need to set to to get all this kind of uh, change data capture is is this um, enable change data feed, which you can set um, in your environment. And, and we set it in our um, in our environment that we run, not not the kind of the, the workspace default. Um, so that every table that we create will have this version on it. So if we just kind of set up set up a bit of data, just for kind of what, what team we've got, how many uh, we did it for prem titles. Um, and so I've written it out to a delta table um, really quickly and and, uh, and and pulled that back. And and you can see that that's that's written it out um, into a data frame. And so the first kind of the first feature is about schema enforcement enforcement so if i showed if i tried to add a new bit of data in and overwrite it and i tried to add a new column in i tried to I tried to add what stadium is going on in there um and, and tried to just overwrite it i get this big error to say um a schema mismatch has happened so you that's the that schema enforcement where you're it, it's stopping you do anything um and it's telling you Right, okay, yeah, this is what the table is, this is what your data is, you've got an extra column, everything. But the exact same data in the exact same way, but just with this option of, of merge schema. So you can merge that in and it'll allow you to, to overwrite that whole Parquet file, which I don't know if anybody kind of has ever had that pain with, with Parquet and, and being able to, to change the, the, the metadata of it. But it's really kind of important halfway through instead of having to redo the whole lot. So if we have this data now that's in our table, in our delta table, um, so you can see it's in in the lake house. We've we've kind of not it's not in a file, it's in it's in this tables folder. Um, and all of these tables in here are delta tables. Um, if we try and add some new data and we've kind of we want to we want to delete delete a row, we want to update um, another row because because somebody won a league and then um, we want to insert a new a new row into that to so the three three main operations with that column we've added this status in just for the for the merge we've created that data frame and this is the the delta table api um like syntax so when you you can merge into that table really easily and say right here's the, here's a data frame that i've got here's the path for that delta table merge into it based on um, a few conditions when when they, when we want to do this when it's um, when to update when the when the status is you and and when it's del when it's D we want to delete it and when we went insert we want to insert the new new tables and it's really really quite intuitive it's quite easy so then we can see that this new delta table is is we've got rid of uh, LFC and we've we've added in um, leads and, and stuff like that so and we've updated that table so what we've got oh, that's not very nice. Um, so what so then what we've got is this version of the table. But when we look back at um, sorry, very funny, isn't it? Um, so then when we look back at the history, so this time travel ver uh, versioning idea, we can see that there's three versions of that data. We can go to that delta table, table, table and just run the dot history, and you can see that there's there's that initial write. There's that second one where we overwrote it with um, with another column in, and then we've merged back into the back into it, and and you can see it's like it's not very kind of helpful. It doesn't tell you what's really happened. Um, it just tells you tell you kind of when it happened and what version you're at. What you can do with that is go to these next these next steps of really doing doing some really powerful stuff with it. So we can say. We can run this com command, which is showing us what the previous version looked like. So we say, right, oh, this, and this is from uh, version zero. So show, show me what, show me what it looked like at version version zero. You can go back, and you can also say, show, show me what it would look like ten minutes ago, or or anything like that. And um, 
and then you can use that. It's good for, for debugging, for raw auditing. But that, does, that hasn't overwritten anything. That's just showing you what that data frame looks like. Um, and you can see this is still what it looks like in that table. You've still got kind of um, leads in there. And you don't have leads in that top level. But then you kind of say, all right, we'll, right, okay, see what the see what happens, what what the old version looked like, and what it does now. But what what else can I can I do? Um, you can run this kind of sequence of commands, which um, we can kind of show you what the the latest version we're at is. And then we can also say that then we can run this um, SQL command about table changes and look at what's happened to get to between uh, to get to version two. So between version one and version two told me that I deleted that row and I've updated these the, this row and this is what it looked like pre-image and this is what it looked like post-image and then this is what the, and I've inserted that the, the, this other row as well so you can see quite easily what's what, what's happening between these versions and we, then we can go a step further and and look at the we can, we can kind of set set this this table changes um, table that we've got this command we can set it to say show me when um when in there it's delete or update pre-image or and, and send the post image will look like the post image and the the inserts set that and then we can set three separate kind of um commands to say show me what's show me what has actually happened here so you kind of join in joining that post and the post view and the preview together show me what's happened as what's different between them and it's and, and then for inserts is quite for inserts and deletes is quite easy. You're just kind of saying you're doing a left join and, and seeing what's null. If you union those together, we get now a data frame that shows me what happened between those two versions, and that looks exactly the same as the data that we created up here to say, right? Yeah, we want to we want to update we want to update this row. We want to delete that one and we want to insert this. But that's manual. When do you ever get data like that? You, you there's if you got this one bit of data that you just wanted to merge into this massive table, you don't really know what's changed, what's overwritten. Um, if you're if because it, it's really you can do kind of better merges or anything like that. But if you've got well, this one table and you've got a massive bit of data to merge into it, and you don't really know what's happened or changed, you can use these commands to to get you the, this data that could then move to. If you're doing this at the silver layer, you'd want to then move it into the gold layer. You've got the data frame of, oh, I don't want to do all of that first merge again. I only want to merge the things that have changed, which you might not have all done. And then we've got a kind of a function that's hidden away in a Python wheel in our shared kind of code repo that can take any table and any set number of fields and join condition does that, that we can then do. It's, it's like a change data capture kind of function. That when we run that again and we say, right, I want to, uh, the, the, the join conditions on the ID, get the get delta changes between those two, uh, between that on the, on the latest version, it'll, it'll show you what the, um, show you what's happened between it. And so it's really kind of useful for, 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 for audit, it's for, for good for going in that med medallion arc like st structure of, right, we want to go into the gold and we want to, Kind of push push the changes through, really good change data capture. Um, but then if if you want to restore back to an old version, you can do, and we can say it's a, just really simple commands. All of this delta this delta kind of API to say, right, I want to restore back to to that um, to that version. Just need this. Um, we're going to restore back to version one, and then that's what the table is then. You, you've, you're not back at the current version that's got leads in it. You've got this version, but then you can restore back to version two. And what you can do then, um, so I want to see, show you what the behind the scenes looks like. So if we go into our lake house, we've got this table that is the current version that's got got the leads one and no, no Liverpool. Um, but then if you go to the, to the kind of the, the three three dots here and go to the view files you can see that actually behind the scenes it's just a load of parquet files and so when we look at it like this it's not loaded um but when we look at it um there's, there's parquet files there's a delta log which shows us what's going on 
and and these are kind of for the for the metadata behind the scenes and we've also got a change data so this parquet file will store all of that change data between the versions so that's how it works kind of under the hood um but yeah, you can see that this is what the the table looks like you've got um leeds and, and ellen road in there and no, and no liverpool so we're, we're we're at version two um but then i think um leaping touched on it there's there's better there's things now that you, that you can do this do it here in this maintenance button in the lake house but i'll show it in the code where you can run these optimized commands so we've got all of those versions we've got we've actually got we've restored it back to to, to version one and then we've restored it again so we've got a couple more extra versions in there but what we can do is we we can then optimize that table um i'm going to set this this is a very dangerous um kind of setting to have because it's, it kind of would let you delete all your data well, I'll do it for, for this um this demo what we can run is this optimized command if we run this optimized command that still has the, Uh, so if we run that uh, optimize command down here, the kind of execute this compaction um, of of the data and those files. And so when we saw there was like four or five files in in the, uh, uh, the files behind the scene. Um, but yeah, you can see. Um, we're running this compaction now, and what we'll have is when we had four or five files in the uh, the delta table, it then it will start working out what is actually needed in that current version and what's not needed anymore. If we've overwritten anything or if we've kind of changed the data, the old data now we don't really care about. There's a bit of um, bit of information that we get, but if we see Go back into the view files. You can see that. Let's change. We refresh it. Um, we've got all of these files that this morning. Um, Four nine o'clock, James. I have to say. Um, but um, this one file from from now. So all of these files haven't been touched just then when I ran that optimize command, which gives us uh, which which tells us that there's data in the data in there doesn't affect. It isn't needed anymore because it's not all the data that we have in that current version is in this file. So what we can do is it's a good practice and and the kind of it's good to keep this maintenance going. What you can do is you can vacuum um, old um, old files and say right if it, if you do it once a week or once a month, depending on your auditing kind of um, requirements. If you don't need this data anymore, then you can go back and say. I want to. I want to delete this, and so we can see that still at the same version. If you go back to this table and refresh it, it's got rid of all those files now, which got rid of, but well, was like eight eight k of of data. But this is three rows of data. If you've got if you've got data that you're re re overwriting every ten minutes or every hour or every day, you're kind of you're struggling to keep up with it. We are we we're seeing that we every day we overwrite. Our bit of data that's 70 gig or something and every day we're just overriding those files and so we need to keep this maintenance going but the caveat to that is i can't then go back to version one because i've got rid of i've got rid of version one because the fact the data was in the file in version it was in one of the ones i've just deleted so it's, it depends on your use case um really but uh, they're just really really powerful bits of bits of code there that's, that's a demo. Could have gone better.
But um, yeah, so then if I go back to the uh, things, there's a couple more slides. Um, so how does it work in Fabric? I know Delta is, isn't a Fabric pro product, it's a Databricks product, but it's open source, open format. Um, all of the tables in the warehouse and lake houses are stored as Delta tables. So even though they look, they, they look different, behind the scenes they're all Delta tables, so all of this functionality is available. Um, currently, uh, in general availability in Fabric, you're at Delta 2.4, which has all of the features that we've talked about already. Um, but in public preview, we've got 3.1, which came out about a year ago um, or so. so so there are there, there are all there are these features, but I think Delta Four got announced for in the coming year. So we're kind of fabric. We're all, always going to be behind Databricks, but you can see that as soon as something new came out in in uh, Delta, then fabric will work as quick as possible to get that into into fabric. We'll just be a little bit behind, and I'll talk about what's in what's in three and what's in the roadmap in the next slide. But what we've got is the Delta tables have seamless integration with the whole. Azure ecosystem. You can, if you're not in Fabric, you can you can use it in Synapse now. You can you, all your data your data factory stuff can write out to uh, Delta um, stuff, and it, especially like Power BI, it'd be um, handy if someone did like a, a, data, a Power BI talk and, and stuff about how we use use Delta a bit better. Because um, that's that's exactly what we need. Everything that we've been talked about today was in Databricks. The data lives in like Delta tables, so. All those things that Leaping talked about was really good. We've got real-time analytics with um, with the direct lake, which um, is a whole other talk for somebody else to to, to go on about. But um, essentially, it's it's this this um, idea of the delta tables are talked to directly. So you've got kind of direct query performance or near enough. We import um, import um, performance, but yeah, direct query kind of real realness so when your delta tables change your power bi will change with it and it will be as fast or near enough as fast as the, as the import because it lives on top of these delta tables in your in your one lake um but yeah so it's complete other talk um real-time intelligence hub um, can write out in, in fabric can write out to lake houses which is everything in, in delta tables so you've got everything like that there um and then so it's another piece to come by. So I'll, I'll wrap it up. Um, so the, the roadmap of, of Delta, um, it, essentially, it's just uh, most of it is about increasing performance, is about increasing algorithms, increasing the, the improving everything that can happen just faster. All your storage will be will be better. Everything works better with Spark. And um, there's a few little kind of features like um, deletion vectors that. Instead of overwriting a full parquet file, when you want to delete something, you can you can add in a vector and say delete that one record um, instead of overwriting the whole thing. Liquid clustering is a big a big a, um, big feature in, in uh, Delta three. So instead of when you've got partitions and the, the maybe you've got a partition that's got loads of data in it, and you've got some partitions that've got tiny amounts of data, you'll have some files that are massive, some files that are small that have some data skew across it, and liquid clustering. Will automatically work out where where the best kind of combinations of those files should live. So you have kind of all the files living in similar sized um, similar sized files. So that if you don't have much data skew, um, they've announced some improved support for kind of like machine learning workflows um, and, and improve the data science side of it. Increasing the the better the stuff with governance, and then run through a summary. Um, but yeah, so it's just like Delta is just this rapidly evolving storage layer of the future. Um, everything's going to kind of merge into that. I, I, I can see um, such so so many powerful features, and it's only going to get better. And no one's ever really going to catch up to it. Um, you can do everything you want with it, and it's going to be your data. You own that that data, um, and it will just kind of take off every year. Databricks will come up with something new that you haven't thought about that will just blow your mind. So thank you. Um, if any questions, grab me. But I think the, the pieces are out and everyone's out there. Thank you.